Are you a roadie who started delving into gravel and off-road riding? Today's video, I'm gonna go through seven things that you might wanna consider when choosing gravel tires, because the information out there can be a little bit confusing. Number one. Are you actually riding gravel? Gravel is a pretty loose term that's now used to describe pretty much any type of off-road riding that's not on a mountain bike. It's probably gonna be easier to explain this visually. This is what I would consider gravel. But most of the time in the UK, we're riding this. More suited to a mountain bike, maybe? Yeah. Obviously, there's a lot of difference and the best tire for the job is gonna depend on what you're riding. Chances are, your choice will also change depending on the time of year as well. In a nutshell, smaller nobbles and faster rolling for actual gravel, bigger nobbles and slower rolling for UK style mud tracks and right away. Over the next few points, I'm gonna break things down into different topics which will hopefully aid your decision process. Is wider better? This topic is a bit of a minefield and I'm not gonna go into too much detail because this topic pretty much deserves its own video. Here are the real basics though. A wider tire will generally be more comfortable because you can run it at lower pressures without the risk of burping it or hitting the rim, like pinch puncturing. Lower pressures, up to a point, feel smoother to ride on rough surfaces. A really wide tire, like this mountain bike tire here, this is 2.3 inch, will be less aerodynamic and heavier because there's more material in the tire. In terms of grip, the more surface area of the tire that you have touching the ground, the more grip you're gonna have. So a wider tire is gonna give you more control and deform nicely when you ride over bigger obstacles like big rocks and whatever other stuff that you may be riding over. If you're not riding over big rocks and big obstacles, then the perks of a wider tire might not be as important to you. So it might be worth going narrower for the performance gains, if that's what you're into. Generally speaking, the bigger and more spread out that the nobbles are on your tire, the better it will be at gripping through loose surfaces and in mud. The bigger you go though, the slower rolling the tire gets. When these nobbles squash and deform, they contribute to rolling resistance which is why slick tires are so much faster. Now, if you've got tires with very small nobbles, the space in between them can get packed with mud quite quickly if you're riding in wet, sloppy conditions. That essentially makes the tire more slick and then you end up sliding everywhere. So that's the benefits of riding a tire like this. This is a Hutchinson Toro. So this is not quite a mud tire, but definitely not a fast rolling cross-country tire. In the middle of an off-road tire, you've usually got some smaller nobbles down the center. They aid in accelerating and braking. The nobbles on the sides are usually a little bit bigger and they're there to give you grip when you're going around corners. Now, you need to engage those when you're going around corners, so it really helps if you bank the bike over as much as possible so you actually activate them. If you ride a tire like this in the mud for the first time, it's actually a really strange feeling because you'll be slipping out and then these side nobbles will cut in and the bike will almost right itself. It's a really strange feeling that you will never come across riding road bikes, so enjoy. It's definitely a learning experience. Here's a visual difference between a Hutchinson Kraken, which is their cross-country tire, fast rolling, made to be lightweight and quick, versus the Toro, which has much bigger nobbles, a little bit slower, and you can see the difference in pattern of tread and how much space there is in between the nobbles compared. So seeing as bigger nobble tires have more rolling resistance, you might want to mix and match your tires. So put a slower rolling but grippier tire on the front of your bike, but a faster and slightly less grippy tire on the back. Because there's more weight on the rear wheel, it's common to mix and match tires so you get the benefits of both. Generally, it's a lot easier to maintain control of your bike if your back wheel does start slipping and sliding around. So another plus for this method. The most common size of wheel that you'll see on performance road and gravel bikes is 700C. It's quite common now though to see gravel riders using a 650B, a smaller wheel, in order to squeeze in a slightly bigger tire. Because the wheel is smaller, there's more clearance between the inside of the front fork, the inside of your rear chain stays, and near your front derailleur, if you have one. The clearance on this bike, the Villia Jena, with 700C wheels is 44 millimeters. But switching to 650B, it means I can use these, 47 millimeters. Long time viewers of this channel might remember when I squeezed in a pair of mountain bike tires into this bike as well, but the clearance was so tight that you have to allow for like mud and stuff getting stuck. So it didn't quite work as well as I wanted it to. Jury is definitely still out whether road tubeless is worth it, but in terms of off-road stuff, 
tubeless is the way to go. There's a reason why mountain bikers have been using it for years. You can run much lower pressures without the fear of pinch puncturing. If you do get a puncture, it will usually seal. It's worth noting that the quality of the sealant that you use inside your tire makes a big difference, so you get what you pay for. I've been using Stan's race sealant instead of the standard stuff recently, which is a little bit more expensive, but it does from my experience, seal punches better. In a classic tubed system, you've usually got a butyl inner tube which sits inside the tire. That's what inflates with air. And then once that punctures, you usually have to replace the tube or repair it if you have time. With a tubeless system, the tire fits on a lot tighter, creates a seal, and then you put gloopy sealant inside and that sealant will then find its way into any holes that may appear while you're riding and seal them. Generally speaking, a tubeless system will be lighter, although the amount of sealant actually put inside the tire will dictate that. They also generally feel a lot smoother to ride, and most tires these days are tubeless ready. If you do want to try tubeless, you also have to make sure that your wheels are tubeless ready too, and then make sure you've got a proper layer of tubeless tape, tubeless valves, sealant ready, and tubeless tire. Have fun setting it up for the first few times. It can get a bit messy. Unlike road tires, the direction you mount your tires really does matter. Usually, you can trust the direction of the chevrons in the middle of the tire, and there'll be an arrow printed on the side of the tire. But, as I discovered recently, that's not always the case. With more aggressive and mud tires, you often mount the rear one the other way around to the front one. You will see printed on the side of the tire, front and rear rotation. The front and rear relates to front wheel and rear wheel, and the rotation is the rotation of the tire. This might seem obvious, but I got caught out. I imagine a lot of roadies will get caught out. And evidently, a lot of mountain bikers on the internet also get caught up because I did Google this and it seems to be a big topic online. So do have a check if you've got some new off-road tires. It's not the end of the world if you do put this back one on the wrong way though. It will be faster, but just not quite as grippy because it's designed to cut in when you're trying to accelerate through mud and loose surfaces and all of that lovely UK slop. So to conclude, and the main message that I want to get across in this video is to look at the surfaces that you're going to be riding and make your choice accordingly. My recommendation would be wide tyre and big nobbles for the UK slot. Don't be afraid of using mountain bike tyres on your gravel bike if they fit. Medium width and smaller nobbles for actual gravel, like the stuff you'd get in Kielder Forest or the stuff you see in America and in South Africa. You know, proper gravel. And further to that, if you're on like hard pack gravel, towpath, some paved sections, a wide road tire, 30 millimeter road tire, it's probably gonna be the fastest solution. Tire choice is always gonna be a bit of a compromise if you're on a changing surface. But trying out different options and working out what works for you is part of the fun. Thank you, as always, for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Please put in the comment section your opinions on this, and if you have any questions, and we can get a conversation going. Really appreciate you guys watching, and see you for more videos soon.